Guys, what's up? I, uh, I mean, it's a bit long overdue. This game has happened, what? It's been two days since this game has happened. I probably should release this sooner. But I was working on these graphics. Trying to do more graphics. A little bit more work. Trying to make the videos look a little prettier. But yeah, uh, just a quick recap. Well, it might not be quick, but we'll see. But just a little recap of the Arsenal United game. I think probably in contention the game of the year for this season. Um, you know, just a great game. I had everything, in all honesty. I mean, goals, chances. Um, and it wasn't even like a, it was a, it was a back and forth with the goals, which actually makes the game more exciting, in my opinion. I, I don't like, like, I mean, especially if like, you know, a, a comeback is cool and all, right? But a game gets really competitive when one team scores and the other team scores and the other team scores and like that. That back and forth is, I think, unbeatable personally, uh, because there's just so much stress. Uh, it, it gets really boring when it's just like one team that's up 3-0 sitting back. The other team's pressing forward. And yeah, they come back and all, but the other team is just sitting back and then they crumble defensively. But when it's back and forth, you know, the team is defending, they're pressing, they're f attacking, they're doing everything they can to win the game. So, um, like I said, probably game of the season. Uh, in contention, I, I don't really recall a game like this. Uh, maybe the, the City-Newcastle game, which I didn't see personally. I heard that one was a great game as well. But yeah, I mean, you know, start off with Rashford, great goal. Um, he's on fire. Just a fantastic strike. You can see, like, the trajectory where it's going literally one way, and it just, like, curves, and then it bounces. And it goes right in the bottom corner. I mean, Ramsdale can't do much about it. I don't blame him. <clears throat> I don't, I, you know, it's just, it's just unfortunate uh, that he got beaten like that, you know, uh, especially in a big game. But, you know, Arsenal come running back. They were killing United. I mean, you know, they were dominating the, the game. They were dominating the game. I mean, I don't know the scoreline doesn't really say so, but they were. I believe Arsenal had, I want to say maybe 17, 19, something. Like some crazy shot, Mark. Almost 20 shots. Were they clinical? No. But clearly there was a pressing going on. There was like a an eager to really win this game. And although United, yeah, they performed not that bad away. United had, I think, like five shots. To, to you to like you know Arsenal 17 or 18 at the time so you know you could really see that Arsenal really wanted to win this game more but but they were clinical enough and so because of that United were still in this game up until the last minute and uh, I think a silver lining in this game is, is definitely Eddie Ketia I mean we could talk about Odegaard we could talk about Jaka we could talk about Thomas Party Saka all these players but if you look at Nketiah's off-ball movement, I think it's probably top five in the league, easily. You know, I don't think it beats Holland. I don't think it beats uh, certain strikers. You know, you got Ivan Tony, who's got great movement as well. But Nketiah off-ball, he's it's it, it, he's always in the right place, the right time, and then he finishes very clinically as well. Like he's very technical with his finishes. You know, he's a good striker, in my opinion. I mean, you would think that. They lose their, you know, Marquis signing in Jesus, gone for almost three months. Is Arsenal gonna sign another striker? They're pursuing Mudrik, all this stuff, but do I mean it, it looks like they don't even need Jesus, like genuinely the way they're playing football, you know? Because Enketi is really fulfilling that role, you know. Even though he's not scoring every game, right? Jesus doesn't do that too either. I mean, Jesus is very, he's the same same as Enketi, right? A lot of off ball movement, trying to be at a good place. Supporting the wingers because Arsenal really played through the wingers. They don't really play through the striker. They play through the wingers. So they, they play that game a lot. And so Enketi is like that perfect replacement in a sense because he's actually like Jesus. He's kind of supporting the wingers, but he's also being a target man, you know, trying to be at the right place. And, I mean, you see with this first goal especially, I mean, it was just beautiful link-up play from Arsenal. And then he was just, bang, right there for the header. Beats the hair. Um... A perfect goal. And then, yeah, and then Saka scored another majestic goal as well. I mean, a great goal. Uh, curling away from De Gea. You can't really do much about that. I mean, it's just a great goal. Because De Gea was really good the whole game, in my opinion. Uh, he was pretty good. It, it's just disappointing. Obviously, he gets beaten like that, but it's Arsenal. You're talking about the best team in the league right now. The most informed team in Europe, honestly. Um, and, and maybe other than them and Napoli, no one's really beating them. You know, um... They're just playing really great football. And yeah, I mean, this is a really shitty scoreline for me, at least as a City fan. I mean, you, you know, 
I was really hoping for United to win, which is shocking. I mean, I'd never want to see them win. I don't want to even think about them winning, especially what they had done to us um, at Old Trafford, uh, considering, you know, that game kind of, you know, got taken away from us. You know, I was really hoping for United to win. I mean, that's the only way we could really catch up to Arsenal, you know, and they didn't win, nor did they draw. A draw would have been super ideal because then it's not, United won't be in our ass, and then Arsenal also dropped two points. But neither of those happened. Uh, the worst situation for whoever's trying to catch up to Arsenal in general, honestly. Um, and also whoever's playing against Arsenal these few days. I mean, I think we literally play them this uh, this Friday, I believe, in the EFL Cup. And then we play them, I think, in the Prem next week too or the week after. You know, it's not looking good for us because their momentum is – they're still undefeated, I think, after a few games. Um, they're, they're undefeated since the last United game. That's the only loss they have, but – I think they've been they've been on a win form. They haven't actually no, because they drew against Newcastle, um, and actually Newcastle. I was about to talk about this too. Uh, they're the only team that has really successfully managed to handle Arsenal properly. Because if you kind of look back at that game, it was a really technical defensive effort from Newcastle by Eddie Howe. Um, you know, like I said, Arsenal really thrives through their wings, right? But they thrive through Martinelli. They thrive through uh, Saka, right? What ends up happening is you have Partey and Xhaka in the, on the holding midfielder. So Partey kind of stays back, right? He's really controlling the momentum of the game. You have Xhaka who pushes a little bit more forward into a more creative role, right? So he's there up front in the attack. And then you have Odegaard, obviously, you know, pulling the strings, the dribbler, right? You give the ball to him, he's going to do some magic, right? And that's what, and, and Partey's job is to basically distribute the ball. And then the wingers, I mean, what they do mainly is they kind of wait for the ball. And they try to cut inside to at least get that through ball going in or go for a cross. Or they just pass back out. It's literally just like City. And then you have the supporting fullbacks coming up front. Either they make overlapping runs or they come towards the midfield and support. Like we see Zinchenko all the time. He always cuts through in the midfield. And then there's that support if just in case of Martinelli's in a pickle, right? He's like, he's being really well defended by Trippier, especially in that game, right? So he's getting, he's getting really, you know, tight defended uh, defense on him. You know, he passes the ball to Zinchenko or like whatever the left back is. And then they go in the midfield, pass it back to part A, part redistributes, system resets. Um, but if you look at the Newcastle game, it was, they couldn't do anything on the wings. Saka was silent. Marnelli was silent. I mean, they perfectly planned it out. Now, Newcastle going forward weren't that great because they were really focusing on their defense. Um, I think they're kind of okay and happy to take the point, especially since they're playing away uh, at the Emirates. And, you know, they, they do very well at home, Arsenal, as you can see from this game as well. So they played a technical game, and they out, 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 did out, 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 out did them. I mean, it's that simple. They didn't really, they didn't really need to do much. They, they, I mean, all they were doing was just really good defense. And, yeah, it's Arsenal. They're gonna, they were putting on the pressure, but it wasn't enough. It became nil-nil. And that was probably the first team so far this season then, um, that has really – Stopped Arsenal from doing anything uh, creatively going forward. Now, it's boring football, right? And if you're City, you need to get those six points that you have against Arsenal. You also need Arsenal to draw points against other teams. You need other teams to perform better. But, you know, you just, City only could get six points from Arsenal. And they have to. Because if not, it's uh, it's very unlikely that we could catch up to them. And it's really crucial and it's really important. Um like I said, this is just really scary um, in the sense of, I mean, look, I, I would much prefer Ar Arsenal winning the Prem than Liverpool, than, than United, than, you know, you know than them, right? Uh, but, you know, obviously you want to win the freaking title. And I feel like there's this big part of me. I mean, it's been a while. Since, like, I think we're going to have Champions League football in February. You know, I'm not super, uh, you know, exuberant on... Uh, on our Champions League hopes this season, uh, just because I think we're so poor defensively. So, you know, obviously I hope we get to the final and we win the Champions League, right? I mean, if you're telling me if I'd rather win the Champions League or the BPL, I'd rather win the Champions League. That's, I'm, you know, Captain Obvious here. But in reality, you kind of want to win the Prem because I feel like we can't win the Champions League. I don't know. I think defensively we're not good. We're not set. And it's really showing uh, clearly um, in, in the BPL, I mean, the, when we lost to Brentford, when we lost to these teams or drop points in general, it, it, it was just a defensive error. 
defensive the defense is just crumbling, right? And, and you know I get it. we don't have Ruben Dias and you know we're playing Ake as center back all of a sudden when he was playing left back the entire season. It's you know this weird thing, right? But we've been riddled with injuries always in the defense. We can never have healthy defenders, and uh, I don't know if we're gonna sign one this off season. Um, or we're going to sign one even January before the window expires, but I don't think so. I think we're going to wait it out. Um, but we, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried. And especially, like, if you look at Arsenal, like, they don't have any major injuries. They really don't. So they're not going to be stopped. The only major injury is Jesus, but Enketi is in that role. And I don't think Jesus was really that, like, Jesus is great. But clearly, you can see Enketi works too. But if they lose someone like Odegaard, can Emil Smith Rowe, who's been playing, who's been on the bench the whole entire season, can he fulfill that role? I don't know. If Saka's out, what are they gonna do? If Martinelli's out, what are they gonna do? If Party's out, what are they gonna do? You know what I mean? So, it's these things where it's all these are all hypotheticals, and Arsenal could just have no injuries the entire year, and City is just screwed, and Arsenal win the league. But uh, overall, you know, just to, like I said, I, it was a great game, unfortunate result. Uh, for me personally, but it's the best team in the league, right? Uh, any team that goes against them, even you know United's been playing class, like you can't really, you can't do anything about it. So, so yeah, I mean we'll see. We play Arsenal uh, this Friday in the EFL Cup. I'll probably make a video on that, say what I think about it, and yeah. All right, peace.